I'm going to try to exactly recreate these native standard buttons from Mac OS. And the reason I've opened the keyboard system preferences is because it has some of these buttons and I want to screenshot them, bring them into Figma. Uh, so I have a comparison point. Now this is against a light gray background and I'd like to have one against a white background. And I think if I click here, I can take one of these buttons. Okay, so I'm gonna try and recreate this in Figma as exactly as I can. And whenever you paste something into Figma, it comes in twice as big as you want it to. So, you know, with this, with, it's a screenshot. So I gotta cut those in half, zoom out to 100%. Let's make an artboard. And uh, let's start with this white one and let's get in here. And I'll just start by making a rectangle that's the right height. And you can see there's some gradient, or there's a shadow rather, and there's a border. So the easy thing to do would be, let's sample the fill color here, control C to get the eyedropper. And then let's put a border stroke on the outside and uh, the radius. So let's see what the radius is here. I think it's five and the border is 0 0.5 uh, width. So let's zoom way in here and see if this looks right. Toggle it on and off. Seems about right. Okay, now why do we put the border on the outside rather than on the inside or the center? Well, the border here is kind of like a shadow and you can see on the other one that the border appears darker on a darker background. So it's important that it's on the outside so that it's not blending in with the white body of the button, but the background of whatever's behind it. We have to figure out that color. So it could sample this border color, but that's not gonna blend properly. Look, it disappears against this gray background. Um, so like I said, it's it's gotta blend in. So let's make it black and then give it a lower opacity. Here's 10%. Now you can see that it, it appears over both background colors. So how do we find out the exact uh, correct background color? If I put it over the top of this other one, I can see if it's the same color, but this is interacting with the border behind it. We'll put a frame around this. Hold command so we can clip off part of the button and make sure clip content is on. And now we can put these right up next to each other. And this frame has a white background. So this is only blending into its white background. And this just looks like it is from the screenshot. Oh, this doesn't have a white background. So this frame needs a background. And just to show you, there's a background there now, which means this rectangle that I've drawn is blending into that white background and not into this other shape. And it looks like the color here is pretty close already, um, but we can bring up Control-C, bring up the eyedropper tool. And we can check the hex code. So you can see it says E6, E6, E6. This one says E5, E5, E5. So we've got to adjust it. We're gonna change the opacity of this stroke. And I can bring up the eyedropper and you notice that the stroke is still selected. The opacity of the stroke is still selected down here. So now I can use the arrow keys to move it up and down. And so there it's darker and there it's lighter. And then I'll just move the mouse over this, um, the actual border that I want, which is E6, E6. And this one is F0, F0. So I want this to be E6. So I'm gonna um, hit the up arrow to change the opacity and see how the value changes. Now, when you hit the up arrow, the value doesn't actually change in the eyedropper until you move your mouse slightly. So I'm gonna jiggle my mouse and try to arrive at E6. So it went from E8 to E5. So I'm gonna call E5 close enough. I'll hit escape. And so what's that? That is 10%. Isn't that what I put at the very beginning? All right, let's zoom back out. Now let's see how it looks down here. That's clearly wrong. So why are there two different colors? Example, this one's E6. Down here at the bottom, it's C3. So perhaps this uh, stroke has a gradient on it. 
So we can change our stroke from a solid fill to a linear gradient. And we'll make the top one be 10% because we figured that one out already. And the bottom one, we'll start with 10%. Okay, so that one's 10%. And this one, we'll start with 10. Let's get our eyedropper up here again, just like we did before. Uh, can't actually see what I'm doing. That's pretty misleading. All right, that'll work. So this color is C3. And right here, we have E5. Need to make it darker. We'll go with four. Once again, we can't get the exact color. All right, so now the top and the bottom of this match exactly. We need to get this shadow in there. So it's important that you have the pixel preview turned on for this, because if I zoom in, if I, if I put a shadow on this one, you can see the shadow super blurry, even if I zoom in, because it, this one's pixely because it's a, from an image. So I can't really compare them accurately. So um, pixel preview, you can turn that on from the menu with show pixel preview or control P, but this is a one X pixel preview, which actually made the bitmap even more pixely. What you want to do is go to the zoom menu. I don't know why it's so hidden. Pixel preview two X. Now this looks exactly the same because that was already a two X bitmap. And now this has pixels in it and we can get everything to match. So let's try bringing the blur down. Cause that's obviously too big of a blur. Um, let's try one and then for Y, let's do one. Cause this does seem to come off the bottom more. Well, I guess we should verify that. I mean, it's clearly lighter at the top. Basically we can go here and see this is all white and then just come down until we see a color. So right there, there's a color, it's F E instead of F F. Uh, so that's actually quite a big shadow. It gets very light right there. So let's draw a box representing the area. So there's two pixels there that have um, shadow in them, including the border. I'm gonna duplicate that box and put it here and let's see if this is any different. So it looks the same. Let's confirm that there's no color here. It's all FFF. So the shadow is not offset towards the bottom. It's centered behind the box, but it's lighter at the top. So that's kind of weird because you would think if it's lighter at the top, it's offset towards the bottom. That means that this shadow is maybe not a typical drop shadow, we might not be able to achieve this effect using Figma's drop shadow, because I think that there's actually a gradient on the shadow itself. So if we make this zero, because we know it's zero now, and then the blur should be two, because we measured it as being, you know, extending up two pixels. So there's Figma's shadow, um, extending up two pixels and down two pixels, but it's too dark. So let's take the opacity down. Okay, that's a pretty close match. But the uh, the area that has the outer border that we added is now darker because there's a shadow behind it. So this is getting complicated because we have to match the shadow and the border, but the border interacts with the shadow. But look, th so the top, the top shadow kind of matches, but the bottom is too light. And so I'm pretty sure this isn't gonna work with using the built-in shadow to get a really close match. So let's turn the shadow off. And instead I'm gonna duplicate this shape I'm going to turn off the border and I'm going to fill it with all black and then we'll add a blur, a layer blur. So instead of a shadow, we're going to use this blur. Let's put that behind the other shape, put it right behind there. Exactly. And we can change this blur to two because we determined already that it uh, is about two pixels that it blurs out. Now let's move these both in here so we can start fiddling with them. It's funny how the thumbnail here is a square and the thumbnail here is rounded, even though they both have rounded corners. Makes it kind of hard for me to know which one's which. I should name them. And I'll just call this one fill and this one shadow. All right, so the shadow, well, I'm guessing that it has a gradient applied to it. So let's change the fill to a linear gradient. And then we're gonna try and match these colors again. But of course we can't really match the color at this point because there's a stroke interacting with it but we could match the next pixel up, the color there. So let's see, we've got F7 and here's F3. Let's focus on the opacity and we'll change the opacity until we get F7 here. Cool, that's an exact match between the Apple button and my blur. Now let's go up a pixel and I've got FC, that's for my uh, blur. 
and Apple's one, it's also FC. So um, getting this one to match got the one above it to match too. And it looks like the next row of pixels didn't, we didn't get a perfect match, but it's okay because it's such a subtle difference at that point. Um, let's, let's do the bottom. So we're gonna have to do something similar on the bottom. Why is there nothing visible there at all? Did I select the wrong layer here? Gonna make sure I get the shadow. Let's get this gradient. Select the bottom one. Okay, there it is. Get the eyedropper. And the one that we want is E4. Is that right? Yeah. And then on the right, we have EB currently. So I'm going to focus on the opacity field and try to get EB. No, E4. There it is. So now we have a match between these bottom colors. Slight mismatch on the second row of pixels, but. I think it's getting more and more subtle as you go down. So as long as this first row matches, I'm happy. Now let's make sure that didn't affect the top one. Seems like it did. I wasn't really expecting that. So let's try let's try tweaking this one again. Oh my god. Okay, focus on that. F7, F6. Did we determine that we couldn't get F7? There's F7. And then is this one still right? It is. Okay. So we got 16 on the uh, top. And what do we have on the bottom? 55. Okay, so uh, I'm pretty convinced that the shadow of the Apple button has a gradient from the top to the bottom and that we've matched it fairly well. And now the stroke is off. So let's adjust the stroke um, until it's right. And now I don't even know if this actually is a gradient on the stroke. It could just be the stroke interacting with the shadow behind it, which has a gradient across it. So let's change this back to solid and see if we can get a match this way. And I'm just eyeballing it. That looks really close. I can't even tell where the separation is anymore. So let's put uh, a little rectangle here that'll give me a hint as to where the separation is. We got E5 on that side, E6 on that side. Let's put another rectangle here for the same purpose. And we've got C2, C3. So they're both slightly off. Let's zoom way in on this. So can I do better? Maybe not. It's too precise, I guess. Um, okay, so I'm happy with that. That is pretty close. And uh, there's no gradient on the on the stroke, which is good because adding a gradient to a border in CSS is going to be, I mean, it's possible, there's ways to do it, but it's going to be a pain. So I would rather not have that, but I will have to create a gradient on the background, which can be done fairly easily because ultimately I want to create this button in CSS. Okay. That could have been worse. Um, let's try to turn this into something that actually looks like a button now. And so to do that, it's in this frame here. Uh, let's select both of these, put it in the upper right. And I'm going to turn off clip content because I want to see that shadow peek through. And let's stretch these out all the way across and down in this frame. And these two layers inside, we're going to pin them to all sides. So I'll hold shift and click the pinning here. Cool. Uh, let's put the text label in it. And so we got to match the text similar to how we match the button, but this should be a lot easier. Um, it's obviously going to be SF pro text and 13 pixels, I would imagine. A good trick is to make this red. And you can see easily if the sizes match. That looks like a pretty good match. And so let's put that over here in our button. Stretch this out center the text, and let's pin this to both sides as well and center vertically. Now I wanna make sure that this is centered vertically in the same way the real one is. Um, so I'm just gonna draw a box across both of these. And it's pretty easy to see that those are the same. Uh, and I guess I should confirm that they're the same height up from the bottom as well. Oh, see they're not. Uh, this box hits the bottom there but it doesn't hit the bottom here. So the text uh, the, the text labels are aligned the same, but the button sizes are different. So this button's too tall. So let's 
um, draw another box here for just kind of a guide. Okay, now those are the same. I've got to make sure that I didn't mess up the text by doing that. Looks like it's still the same. Cool. Now I can make this uh, black or whatever color is being used here. I'll just sample it from that text. It's like a really dark gray. I'm not as concerned about the width, but we'll match up the width. And uh, just notice that my frame here has a white background color, which we don't want. So we'll turn off the background color, just remove it from this frame. And let's turn this into a component and we'll call it Mac button. I would say that's a pretty good match. Now here's the real test is to take this color, the same background color from this other button that we uh, sampled, put an instance in here and see if these match up. Put this button here, let's change this fill to crop cut in on it like this, and we can match those up. Looks pretty perfect to me. All right, so I'd say we've done a good job recreating this Apple button exactly. And I always find this is a great way to learn because you kind of see like, what did they do? It's, you, it's so easy to add a drop shadow in, in Figma, but when you look at, sometimes you look at a button like this and you're like, why does that button have like a slightly different quality? There's something slightly nicer about it than my button. You know, I added a drop shadow, looks about the same, but it turns out that the drop shadow on this actually has a gradient across it, or seems to. Um, so there's maybe like a higher level of detail that went into that button that you wouldn't really determine, you wouldn't really realize or understand that unless you recreated it with a lot of detail like that. All right, so now let's code this uh, with CSS. Should be an interesting challenge.